Before there was a Hollywood movie called Easy Rider, Paddy Tyson, who was born in Ireland, had visions of two-wheeler road trips bouncing through his baby brain. His first road trip took place in 1976. He was only six and on the road in a car with his mother. Tyson is visiting Vancouver to appear at the motorcycle show, the Vancouver Motorcycle Show. He is the author of a new book called The Hunt for Puerto del Faglioli. It is my pleasure to welcome Paddy Tyson to Studio 4 to tell us more. Good morning, Fanny. Thank you nice. very much for having me here. Nice to meet you. So in search of sunshine, in search of adventure. Well, and today in search of your great Vancouver snow. I love mm. it. I absolutely love it. It's so different for me. Well, how about riding a motorcycle in the snow? Not so much fun. Well, we have just been in Edmonton, at the show up in Edmonton as well, mm -hmm. and minus 29, I have to say, there is one prerequisite to successful motorcycle adventure, and that is not getting hypothermia. So, yeah, um, I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to ride at the minute. But. No. Uh, your first motorcycle, first time you rode, who taught you? Uh, first time I rode was actually, I took a, a lift on the back of my, mother, my mother's friend and uh, I think I was about seven and it scared the life out of me. Um, I don't know why I really adapted to it afterwards. I thought it was mm. noisy, I thought it was frightening, I thought it was fast. Um, that was in London, UK. And, um, but I really wanted to get a bike as soon as I started driving, really. I just thought this isn't exciting enough, mm. I need a bike. Okay, so a little wanderlust in there. Well, wanderlust from when I was really small. Um, mm. My mum had a big map of the world on the, in the living room. You say living room here? Yeah, yeah. in the, on the living, room. living room. wall. Anytime anything came on the news, on the radio, on the TV, um, any country was mentioned, it was like straight there, got to find where it is, got to put, <laughs> you know. And then I'd spend hours at night looking at maps uh, and go, well, look at this topography. I wonder what it's like there. I wonder if that desert is really hot. Mm. I wonder. And I could almost smell the country when I would look at a map. Wow. So, so yeah. when you were a child, you weren't reading Charles Dickens necessarily, mm. you were reading the Global Coach Tours. I was, I was actually. Global Coach Tours um, was a brochure that it was a real bonding moment for mom and myself. Uh. And uh, yeah, lying on the floor because they'd, they'd talk through where you could go somewhere in Europe on this mm -hmm. coach. And there'd be a little map of one section of Europe. And yeah, I just, just, it was great. The line on the map, it's, it's become a thing for me, following a line on the mm -hmm. map. So. so the hunt for Puerto <coughs> del Faglioli. Sounds like a bean, but we know it's not. What is it? Uh, well, it's kind of a secret, unless you've read the book, but I'll let you into it. Okay. Um, I, did a, I did an interview with, just before I left on this trip, this, and the trip that this book refers to is um, crossing Canada, circle of the US, and down through Central America to the, the, the jungle with Colombia. Mm -hmm. And um, I did an interview before I left, and the, I noticed that the journalist wasn't taking an awful lot of notes. And I thought, well, fine. Uh, you may have an interview style all of your own. Um, when I read the article, <laughs> Um, I noticed that I was, after I'd crossed Canada and gone through the States, um, I was going to go south of the equator into Mexico. I thought, that's some big old seismic shift going on there to get Mexico into the southern hemisphere. Um, but then when I reached the very southern tip of Mexico, a place called Puerto del Faglioli, um, I would possibly get a boat to Africa from there. So I thought, either she's confused stuff with Tierra del Fuego at the bottom of Argentina, right. um, or there is a place, so I've got to find it. So I did a quick Google, and sure enough, it came up. And it was a story about an Irish motorcyclist who was about to go there. Um, so I thought, you know what? I am actually going to see if I can find a place called Puerto del Faglioli. Mm -hmm. And so it began. And you found it? Uh, I, I couldn't Still possibly a say. You've got to, Can't you've, possibly <laughs> say. I know you were the in... The last page. I don't want to give it away. I know you were in Ontario. You were in the Kawarthas. You were in Alaska with the Black Bears. You were in California with the Redwoods. Incredible redwoods. They make you feel mm. so insignificant. It's an amazing feeling. What about the borders? Uh, tell me about a few of your experiences at the U.S. border when you enter the U.S. of A. Well, yeah, the U.S. of A, it's, uh, it's, it's always quite frightening. Um, and as, a, as, a, as an alien, as a non-Canadian, in fact, of course, I've got to go through the whole fingerprinting and, and iris scanning um, to get into the zone. And, uh, yeah, it is frightening. There's just weaponry everywhere. And it's... <laughs> Homeland so. Security, wondering who you are, and uh, one border guard said, "I, uh, this ain't no international license." Uh, this was no, this <laughs> or was something this like was, that. <laughs> this Are you was, going into Mexico? Uh, yeah, it was southern Arizona, near the border. Um, I'm riding along, and all of a sudden, my mirrors are full of of the red and blue flashing lights, and uh, and yeah, so the siren goes, and I, I have to pull over, and the state trooper is just almost foaming at the mouth. And he's like, what are you doing with a license plate like that? What's this Mickey Mouse license plate? And I said, well, I just, 
you know, it's a, it, you're right, it looks a bit silly, but it's a British license plate, big yellow thing. And he said, well, you can't drive in Arizona like this. I said, well, I, I've, I've been in California and Utah and Wyoming and, and, and I've been everywhere and no one said anything. Well, no, you, you, can't, you can't use this license. So, um, yeah, he, um, he went quite wild at me and, and then, uh, uh, yeah, frightening. Instructed me mm -hmm. that I had to go from there to Tucson Register the bike as an Arizona bike. There's just no one's ever crossed a border on a motorcycle before, he said. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, well, you know, there's Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman and there's yes. Ted Simon. And, mm -hmm. But uh, no, he'd never heard of it, so I had to, I had to do that. So you had to do due diligence I, in case you were picked up by uh, an Arizona highway patrol. Don't want to do that. What about uh, lingo on the road? Uh, uh, squatties. Don't ride at night because of the squatties. Squaddy? Squad cars, is that what it means? It said, I, re I read it in here. And the, oh. it said, somebody gave you advice. Somebody along the way said, well, don't ride at night here because there's lots of squaddies. And I was thinking that must be squad cars. Do you remember? Uh, well, in, in, in I, I don't know. I've probably used slang that's dreadfully English. It was not a bad, no, 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 not no, no, a no. bad word. No, 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 heavens above. And uh, that might happen. No, um, no, really, it's, 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 it's the beasties and the bugs. Um, are frightening, oh. or of course the bandits in Central America sure. is an issue. Um, How do you stay safe? What, what, uh, what precautions I, do you take? I do my absolute utmost to smile, and I'm not very mm. good at it, but that is, that is the border crossing tool of choice, is to sure. smile. I carry no weaponry, I do my utmost to never uh, engage in any bribery, although I do get caught out. I got caught out briefly in Nicaragua, um, and I had, uh, I had a very smiley policeman flag me down. and. Um, and he said, uh, you know, buenos dias, senor. I said, yeah, good morning. He, and he looked at the, the, I've got a flag, an Irish flag on the front of the bike. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, oh, you're from Ireland. I said, yeah. I said, welcome to Nicaragua. I said, thank you very much. And he said, can I see your passport? So I said, certainly. And, um, and then he said, no, $10. I said, well, <laughs> said, what for? And he said, well, because I have your passport and a gun, and you don't have either. So, uh, <laughs> and I thought it was really quite polite bribery, right. so I had to give him the $10. Why not? So 10 U.S. dollars. 10 U.S. Of course. Uh, but, uh, you know, people who ride motorcycles know that practically everything you own when you're on a trip like yours... Uh, lives with me. ...lives with you. So yeah. that's... The bike's your home. The bike is my home. But, you know, it's incredibly liberating to get, after the first few weeks on the road, to get into the realization that you only need maybe three T-shirts, one to wear, one that's dirty, one clean, mm -hmm. ready to go. Um, two pairs of trousers, and really, that's it. You know, few, some okay. underwear, maybe, sure. if you're going to meet someone. Now, yeah. what, uh, how are you uh, received by uh, biker gang guys, like some Hells Angels? You're, you're rolling through California, you're in Sturgis, wherever you are. Uh, well, I had... How do you get along? I had, well, generally very well, mm -hmm. um, particularly in Canada. Now, my first, my first proper engagement... Um, with Canadian riders was uh, at an Atlanticade festival over in Nova Scotia. No, New Brunswick, sorry. Okay. And uh, basically, I'd been the, the, um, the swarthy traveler for long enough, and it, it rained consistently for about five days. My tent was wet, all my clothes were wet. And I thought, you know what? Tourism kind of sucks. I see there's this bike rally on. I want to go and talk about engines. And I just want to have a few days talking about engines. Um, so that's what I did. And I met so many glorious maritime Canadian bikers. Um, central of which were the, the Motorcycle Mojo guys, the mm, magazine. Right. And because the whole book really was an accident. It was only ever email, emails home that kind of went viral. And one of the people who, who, who ended up on that emailing list was, was the editor of Motorcycle Mojo, right. Grant Roberts. And um, really, it was because of that and a few articles that they asked me to then write, um, mm -hmm. it, it sort of boomed into it what blossomed. it is now. So I have to say, Canadian riders, some of the friendliest in the world. Absolutely amazing. I've been, you know, I've ridden around New Zealand, I've ridden around Australia, I've ridden Philippines, I've ridden all over Europe. Mm. But there's something about Canadians that is just... Really? Yeah. Someone told you that. They warned you. They said, uh, Canada will buy <coughs> your arse. Ah, this was, yeah, and I, I do hope you haven't got, that's a slightly embarrassing photograph that exists of me. Yeah, it's your mosquitoes. You have incredible mosquitoes here. We do. We grow them big. Yeah, and, and to be honest, the reference was, was a guy I met in, in New Brunswick who said, you know, the weather just mm -hmm. might bite your ass because I was looking at some stuff on the Weather Channel, which I absolutely fell for, your Weather Channel. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, there was, there was uh, minor tornadoes or something in the prairies at the time. There was uh, uh, hailstorms in Quebec and all this sort of stuff. Um, but 
the reality was I had one al fresco sitting at the side of the road and the oh, I mean, it's a shocking photograph, but I, was, sure I must have is. had about 50 bites in just a few minutes. Is it in here? That, what it is, actually, um, near, the, near the front, I think. I don't, okay. <laughs> luckily, too small for people here to see. Here he is, on, stark on, naked. Oh, on, yeah. Oh, that's, look. That's <laughs> Not quite. Those are big bites. Yeah. And, of course, there are the, uh, the land of uh, the buffalo and the moose and the bear and all of that, because you went up to Columbia Ice Fields, all yeah. of that. Yep. Uh, encounters with wild animals, not much fun when you're on a motorcycle. No, you, it's, you're certainly not protected. You're not sitting mm. in an SUV by any means. And uh, yeah, I have one photograph that I like to show people of a, of a, a bear that I saw at the bottom of the Icefields Parkway, actually near sort of Kananaskis. Yes. And, um, and they all say to me, why is the photo blurred? Well, I tell you what, <laughs> you try and stop a motorcycle when a guy's just walked across the road in front of you. Get out your camera mm -hmm. and try and focus on a bear that's looking at you. You know, the biggest thing I have at home, the most frightening animal, is a hedgehog. So this is, you know, this is something quite different. Yes, yeah, so you don't want to hit a moose. No. Uh, if a moose is loose uh, in the Rockies, yeah. no. Yeah. You'd be a dead motorcycle rider, pretty much. Uh, what kind of bike do you ride? Harley, BMW? Oh, no, none of the no, above. No, no, no. No, I, I, uh, I ride in Aprilia. Oh. Um, and in Canada, they're not a huge manufacturer in Canada. They're not, sorry, not a huge retailer. Aprilia? But Aprilia, it's Italian. Italian. It's a dual sport 650. Oh. Um, and it's not terribly fast in North America, but it's perfect when you're out of it. Because realistically, you leave North America 45, 50 mile an hour is all you're going to ever manage. There's so much free range livestock, so many gravel, so potholes, mm -hmm. mud that that's really all the speed you'll ever travel. So sure. It's, it's perfect. Well, I spent a lot of time in Colorado, and uh, you've got to love the road signs in, in the United States. The, yeah. There's a lot of road signs with, with a lot of interesting uh, grammar. Um, mm -hmm. When you see stuff falling like... Rock. Falling rock. Falling rock. Falling uh, rock. Uh, beware motorcycles. And I wonder, is there supposed to be a comma in there? Is that me? Or is right. it telling other motor motorists that there might mm -hmm. be a bike around? So yeah, that's interesting. Sure. In case of flooding, there's one in Colorado on the way to Steamboat. It says, in case of flooding, climb to safety. Yeah, like I'd need okay. telling. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do that. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the Burma Shave uh, uh, signs are still up anymore, but they used to be fun. Now, when you were traveling in the United States, Obama was not yet president, right? He was not. It was a fantastic time. It was the mm. whole build-up, late, uh, late 08, right up to the November elections, and it was a very interesting time to, to travel the States. How yeah. so? Just hearing conversations, being in bars, mm. um, getting a feel for the ground, you know, what, what, mm -hmm. what people on the ground felt. And it was interesting um, that, that a lot of people um, were really aware. They didn't necessarily want to publicly support him, but, but would say, you know, on the side, oh, you know, if we don't, if we don't elect him, what, what? are we going to do? Yeah. Sure, uh, it's history making. It is. Oh, it's an and incredible you're time. Mm -hmm. I know, an absolutely incredible time. And the night of the election, I managed to get, I did a loop of, of sort of the, the, the West um, and came back to San Francisco for the night of the election. Um, I you had went some, through rush hour in San Francisco? I had, you yeah, did? I love it. I love it. You see, California, <laughs> well, this is the great thing. California, like all of Europe, is the only state where a motorbike can filter through traffic. Mm. So, you know, we beat yeah. congestion. So I don't mind if there's rush hour or not. You don't? You don't no. Okay, then. Do you name <clears> your bike? I do. Is she um, a she or a he? Oh, she's a she. She's a she. She's a she. Um, there's no, there's no innuendo, but uh, but she's called Peggy. Mm. And if you spend an awful lot of time on the road inside a helmet on your own, you need someone else to talk to. And uh, and Peggy's who I hold long <laughs> conversations with. Oh, that's great! So. How fabulous! So you're at the show. You're at the uh, uh, Vancouver Motorcycle Show for three days, four days. Four days. Twenty twenty nine. Four days. Yep. Uh, are we? Well, I know you're a lecturer. University lecturer? I, I have been a university lecturer, yeah, in, in politics and sociology, yeah. Okay, so will you be speaking at the show or just having some fun? No, well, I'm, I'm, I'm having some fun meeting writers. The last few shows have been great. Um, but, yeah, I'm also doing uh, half-hour slideshows every day. Oh, great. Um, they vary times, though, sort of in the from five-ish depending on the day, and I think on the Saturday right. it's midday. I'm, I'm okay, on. and Pancho Villa's, I know you found Pancho Villa's house. Yes. Got to go there. Yeah. The hunt for Puerto del Faglioli. Yeah, okay. I'm still hunting. Let me know when you <coughs> find it. I will. I okay. will. I'd be delighted. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. For me. 